a hundred videos. One hundred. I mic drop. I just if I had a mic I'd drop it. Well well I do have a mic, but I it's built into the camera and I don't want to drop that. <laughs> Greetings one and all, and welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. Yes, this is going to be a video about this being my 100th video. How very meta of me, right? Anyway, yes, as hard as it is for me to believe, I've made a hundred of these stinking things, uh, not counting my channel trailer video and my quick and dirty snowpocalypse update video from back in, what was it, March? Yes, I have made a hundred of these videos. It's taken me, you know, what is it, uh, 16 months, something like that, to get to this point. Uh, and it's been an amazing ride. I didn't think I would make it this far, honestly. Uh, but it's been a whole lot of fun. I've made new friends and expanded my music listening uh, uh, sphere and altered my music listening habits a little bit. All of which I will be talking about in this video. And I, I struggled for a little while about how to do this in a way that would be interesting and a little more watchable than your average ordinary video. And nothing was really clicking and I finally decided, hey, why not do it in the form of an interview? It would give me a little chance to be a little whimsical in a way and uh, play around with the concept a bit. So I decided to bring on my favorite and most trusted interviewer, me. Me, thank you very much for being here. Thank you so much, Tom, for the invitation. Uh, it is just wonderful. I can't tell you what an honor it is just to be in the same room with you, really. It's just so staggering and humbling. to Even just to be breathing the same air as you is, to me, is an honor. I just, it, oh, too much? Dial it back? Oh, okay. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with the interview here. Although, to be honest, you could have done something to make yourself a little more presentable. I mean, you know, put on a decent shirt, uh, maybe shaved. It's... You know, you kind of look like an unkempt slob, honestly. Well, this is always what I wear. I mean, I I want to convey a, a relaxed sensibility to my viewers. I, I want it's, it's like I'm inviting them into my home, you know, just kind of a very informal kind of... Why do I have to defend myself to you? You're a guest in my place here. Uh, I mean, and hey, since we're on the subject, how come you get to sit in a nice, comfortable, easy chair and I have to sit on the stool like I always do? I mean, what's up with that? Well, the good thing about being an interviewer is you don't have to answer the questions. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, so, uh, how did you first get into music, and how did you come about uh, having your own YouTube channel? Oh gosh, I can't remember how or when I first got into music. It was... I, I've been told that when I was a little, little kid, a little toddler, uh, I would be caught dancing in front of the TV when the theme song for whatever particular sh show was on uh, started playing, so I guess uh, by that measure I've had a an appreciation for music in me since almost since almost when I was born. But uh, yeah, I mean, it kind of happened very, very gradually aside from that. I mean, when I was a teenager, when I first got into the first couple of pop rock albums, I mean, I owned some 45s back when at the beginning of my teenage years. But the first kind of music I really got into was on the instrumental side of things. I first got into a new age phase back in the late uh, 80s, early 90s. Uh, so I re was really into that for a while, and also uh, movie music, orchestral and instrumental movie music was a big thing for me in the beginning. Uh, but then it was kind of in the mid-90s was when I really started getting, getting into music with lyrics in it. Uh, pop and rock was what I first started getting into, and uh, you know, it just kind of went from there. And as for how my music YouTubing got started, uh, well, I, my first foray into music journalism, I guess you'd say, was... Uh, I had a written form music blog for oh several years, I think, from late 90s to early 2000s, I think it was. Actually, it might, it might not have even started until the 2000s, but uh, yeah, it was out there for a while. Um, I had fun with it for quite a while at first, and then it just kind of, it was a combination of things that, uh, you know, I'd started losing interest in, you know, having to do all the writing and stuff, and also, you know, things that were happening gave me a little less time to do that, and so the posts got fewer and further between, and eventually it just kind of petered out. And then, uh, fast forward several years, uh, my brother actually got me this video camera for Christmas back in 2014. And so I did, uh, in January of the very next year, you know, a couple weeks after I had the camera, I decided to take a shot at doing a YouTube video, and I, I just, you know, I just was so unhappy with the first result that I just put it away for like, oh, two years, I think. And then finally, I gave it another gave it another shot. Decided to stick at it. I 
I knew it was going to be a little rough at, at first, but then, you know, I eventually got my groove on, and uh, it's, yeah, it's kind of funny. I never thought I would make very much use of this camera when we bought it. It was kind of like, uh, or when my brother gave it to me, it was kind of like, why did he get me a camera? But as it turns out, it's been a lot of fun. I've gotten a lot of use out of it, and yeah, here we are. Well, it's really interesting to hear about your uh, early beginnings in music journalism. So, uh, what has been your favorite part of having your own YouTube channel? My favorite part? Uh, well, gosh, when, honestly, the first thing I think about when I think uh, of, you know, my YouTubing years is, and what's come out of it is the friends that I've made. Um, a couple of really close friends, a couple of others who I hope to be close friends with uh, eventually. We're kind of working toward that. Uh, you know, the top of the list of friends is obviously Noah from SMAB Reviews. Um, he's just a fantastic guy inside and out. I mean, we've we've come to the point where we uh, chat and commiserate and confide and kid around through uh, texting or emailing and whatever. Almost daily we chat in, in some form. Uh, and we've we've actually come to the point where we're exchanging CDs with each other and uh, we've collaborated a few times on YouTube. We, I've known him for a little over a year, what, 14, 15 months, and, but it feels like I've known him for 10 years. It's just, you know, we've become fast friends and very, very good friends. Not just one of my, not just my closest YouTube friend, but one of my closest friends in life in general. So he's just a fantastic guy. And uh, then we have uh, Shyok from The Quotable Shyok. Uh, and all the links to all these channels, by the way, are in uh, my description below, just so you know. Uh, yeah, Shyok is a really great guy. Um, we chat... Uh, not probably not as often as we should definitely not as often as uh, Noah and I do but and we've we mostly chat about music we started talking a little bit about life stuff in general and uh, we're we've collaborated a few a few times him and I and we're actually getting to the point where we're about to exchange uh, small bunches of CDs for for Christmas we thought we'd do that it just sound, seemed like a lot of fun so uh, and so yeah he's another really good friend and uh, then I've got you know these other well second tier friends I, I don't I hate to you know push them down like that because I mean they're they're just great people I love interacting with them I just don't interact with them as much as I do with Noah and Shyok we've got Garrett over at Young Entertainment Specialists uh, he's he's just a really nice guy through and through I mean you know we have he's one of those guys that uh, I don't think I would become friends with if it weren't for our shared passion of music and our strong commitment, both of us, to not taking ourselves too seriously on our channels. Uh, I think we're in, in that way we're kind of kindred spirits. So uh, you know, I mean, you know, we have in some ways we have different values, but uh, you know, I mean, he's just a great example of you know, looking beyond that. You know, that kind of stuff doesn't really matter in the long run, in in my opinion. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, we're 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 becoming. I I I like to think, for being presumptuous, I hope not, uh, that you know maybe we'll be good friends down the line uh, more so than we are and and the same thing goes with uh, Ryan over at True North Reviews another great guy really nice guy great content by the way all these guys have great content on their channels the guys that I've been talking about uh, yeah and he's just he's just a really nice guy does uh, does great re reviews and the thing I like about him is he's he's starting to also kind of you know open up show a little bit more of his personality in his videos be a little bit goofy I, I, I like that and uh, Another thing is he, uh, and I'm going to be talking about this soon uh, in another video, is I kind of have a soft spot for Canadians in general. And one thing I like about True North Reviews is he actually takes, he takes some pride in the fact that he's Canadian and tends to put an emphasis on Canadian artists in his channel. So uh, that's very cool. And uh, so uh, what about your least favorite part of having your own YouTube channel? Oh, my least favorite part. Uh, well, it's the fact that I have to be in a certain mood to do a video uh, in, in order for it to come out right at least. Uh, of course, you know, all YouTubers go through that. Uh, you know, sometimes you're just not in the mood to do a video, and I don't like to leave my viewers without some sort of content. I, I, I like to upload every week. Uh, occasionally it's going to be, you know, two weeks that I'm not doing a video. I don't like to do that, but sometimes, I mean, you just, no matter how you try to force yourself to do something, it's just not going to turn out right. And why do it if it's not going to turn out right or if, it's, if you're not going to be happy with it? So that's one thing is that I really have to psych myself up sometimes to get in front of the camera. I don't have the stage fright, I guess you'd say. It's not really a stage. It's more of a camera fright, camera shyness maybe, that I used to have uh, in the beginning. 
uh, so it's not nearly as intense as, as it used to be. So, you know, I, I've been having fun with it. I think I've been getting more into the groove, but uh, yeah, that's really the only downside is, you know, yeah, just you got to be in the mood to do this or it's just not going to turn out right. Oh, yeah, I, I don't have any doubt that that's probably something that a lot of YouTubers can relate to, I'm sure. So uh, how satisfied are you with how your channel has evolved over your last 100 videos? Oh, I'm very satisfied. I, uh, I mean, hey, when you look at my first few videos, uh, I was incredibly stiff and awkward, and uh, I took myself too seriously in front of the camera, and I you know, almost didn't know what to do with myself. And, and, that, and that was one of the things that, as I said a minute ago, put pressure on me, uh, made me sometimes not be in the mood to do a video. It was almost worked to the point where it was just not fun to do it, and I thought I was going to quit early on. But uh, yeah, since I decided to kind of embrace my goofiness and uh, to... Uh, to nod to Weird Al Yankovic, to embrace my white and nerdiness, uh, to not take myself too seriously, to loosen up, to show more of my personality, and to not be afraid to have an awkward moment or, you know, flub a line, or sometimes I even show my bloopers, uh, you know. So uh, another thing I'm really happy with is that I have, uh, through this channel, I've been exploring more genres that I probably would not have started exploring if I hadn't been doing this channel. I've gotten a bit more into... Uh, uh, taken more forays into R&B and even a little hip-hop and country. I used to not be a country fan at all. Uh, See, so yeah, I've been exploring that and of course, you know, with the Backtracks uh, feature, I've gotten much more into vinyl. Uh, you know, justified the expense of uh, upgrading my stereo considerably a few years back. Uh, you know, buying more vinyl, listening to it, it's that's just so much fun. And, uh, you know, listening to albums I've never listened to before. Uh, you know, this channel and backtracks in particular is giving me an excuse for doing that uh you know so yeah that's just you know i am very happy with how uh, my channel's evolved yeah now speaking of the uh, humor that you put into your youtube channel uh what inspired you to do that and how do you come up with those funny cold opens that you have at the beginning of your videos well the, the cold opens uh usually i come up with them the day that i do the video uh, occasionally, and, and this is actually happening a little bit more often, and I've actually got uh, one of the few times that I actually have a list of uh, cold open ideas that I've, uh, you know, been building up. It's a small list, but hey, it's something. But uh, yeah, and, you know, occasionally I am totally at a loss for a cold open, and I just end up putting an outtake or a blooper that I do in the process of, do, of doing the video at the beginning of a cold open, and uh, sometimes it's uh, stuff that uh, it's not my fault. Sometimes it's uh, nailing on the roof that uh, interrupts me and uh that was that was one of the funniest ones that I one of the ones that I'm most proud of was that uh, it was actually not my fault it was my brother's fault uh, using the uh, nail gun up on the roof that uh, created a whole bunch of bloopers that I was able to uh, use for a nice little semi extended cold open but uh, anyway yet yeah, the the, yeah, the ideas just kind of come at me in a variety of ways. I just kind of go with the flow and let inspiration strike me when it strikes me. So, uh, and as for just you know the humor in general, uh, it was basically what kind of dawn, made the light dawn on that is there's a YouTuber out there named Ben Simpson, and he's he's from the UK, and he he does a good job. He used to do a lot more music videos than he does now, uh, but he now he does a lot of uh, he's into horror movies, horror Blu-rays and does a lot of uh, updates on horror movie Blu-ray videos that he's uh, uh, accumulated over the months and years. But sometimes he does still do music-related uh, topics, and and he just kind of started uh, with one video in particular, is at least where I noticed it, was he put a lot of self-deprecating humor and very wry jokes and awkwardness into his video. You know, I'm sure that a lot of CDs sound better than a lot of vinyl, but it's not as fun to have a tiny little thing as opposed to a big, great big thing as I... Uh, no. And that just kind of hit me. It's like, why don't I do that? I shouldn't take myself too seriously. This isn't, you know, high-level journalism here or anything. It's just me at home. And, and, you know, the fact that I want to make this stuff casual, like I was mentioning with your rude comment at the beginning of the video, uh, you know, hey, I wear my sweats or a t-shirt. I keep this really relaxed, low-key, informal. So, you know, I just figured it's high time that I convey that relaxed attitude toward what I do in front of the camera. So that's kind of how it, it came to be, and I I hope that my viewers appreciate it, and I think that uh, 
is one thing that makes my channel kind of unique. So uh, how did you come up with the idea for Backtracks? And is there a reason that you do it the way you do it? Uh, you only acknowledge two albums uh, for each year, and you only do the years in five-year intervals. Uh, why is that? Well, basically, uh, the idea really germinated from, uh, you know, seeing the little news tidbit, tidbits and stuff on, like, your Facebook feed, your Twitter feed, and all that stuff about, hey, this album is such and such years old this, this week or today. And, you know, I kind of, I started getting a little irked that I didn't know about this ahead of time. So I decided, hey, why not do a whole feature once a month talking about album anniversaries and, you know, so maybe give you guys a chance, and myself as well, a chance to maybe celebrate the anniversaries however you want to before they happen. Of course, I've been, lately I've been putting the feature at the end of the month instead of the beginning of the month. Try as I might, I've been trying to navigate backtracks to the beginning of the month so that we can all get the anniversaries, news of the anniversaries before they happen, but I've just not been able to do that. Uh, hopefully, uh, that, that'll be a New Year's resolution to do, uh, to try and get that done next year to put the backtracks toward the beginning of the month. Uh, but yeah, and, al and also um, to get myself to listen not only to more classic albums, but also to start listening to vinyl. I figured that was a really good way to get myself to start listening to vinyl more, uh, and, you know, by, by spotlighting an album which happened to be celebrating an anniversary that month. So, yeah, just that, you know, all that, all those reasons together. And as to why I do it just, you know, every five years and just two albums per year, uh, the short answer is, for brevity, to keep the videos relatively short. You know, I mean, if I did every year and more than two albums every year, the video could go on for hours. Uh, you know, so, and also because, you know, an album's 20th or 25th or 50th anniversary is going to be more noteworthy than its 12th or its 17th anniversary, you know. So I figured that you know f every five years was a good milestone uh, anniversary to do that with. And as for why I do just two albums, uh, it's so that not only to keep the video short, but also uh, every five years when that same set of target years comes around again, I'll have other albums to talk about. So. You know, every five years, uh, you know, th this allows me to do the Backtracks feature every five years without running the risk of repeating an album. Uh, and of course, I will, of course, uh, take care to keep note of the albums that I've already mentioned so that five years from now, I won't mention the same albums again. Uh, although I, I may uh, spotlight an album that I had mentioned in a previous uh, yearly cycle. Uh, so, you know, there's always that. But uh, yeah, that's basically the reason is... Uh, to keep the video short and, uh, you know, to uh, to not run the risk of repeating albums. And how about your other monthly feature, Bargain Bag? Uh, how did that idea come about? And I'm sure, by the way, that a lot of people are probably happy that uh, you were able to think ahead and keep that feature alive despite the loss of skips. Yeah, Bargain Bag. Yeah, there is basically one guy who's responsible for that. And curiously enough, he is his channel is dormant right now and I'm, I'm kind of sad for that. I, I'm disappointed because I've always enjoyed watching his videos, and uh, he, he's been teasing the idea of possibly coming back, but uh, he's hinted that his channel could be uh, a bit different, quite a bit different if he comes back, which, which I mean, honestly, Sam, that only intrigues me more, so you got to come back. When, when, when your time allows, try and work it into your schedule. I, I miss your videos. Uh, but anyway, yeah, Sam Bennett is the guy I'm talking about, and uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's really good at... Uh, or was, you know, at the time, good at reviewing albums. And uh, one thing he did uh, toward the end of his uh, channel's past life, I guess you'd say, is he had a couple of big grocery bags full of CDs that he bought from a local store. It was a mystery grab bag. It was, what, 40 CDs for $15, I think it was. And he opened them in live streams on his channel. And I had more fun watching those two videos. He did it twice. I had more fun watching those two videos than probably any other videos that he'd done. Not that he's not good at reviewing albums. I mean, he is. Just is just for some reason that was just a whole lot of fun. And so I decided, you know, the local store Skips sells the same kind of deal, just a smaller version in a little small little lunch bag size thing, seven CDs for two ninety nine. So I decided, hey, I'll buy two of those every month, open them uh, on my channel. And then I decided to, you know, put a little twist in it by uh, actually talking about a CD that you might find in a bargain bin somewhere. Uh, and, you know, I, so I do that in between opening the two bags. And, of course, before I open the two bags the next month, I talk about what I found in the bags the last month. So it's just turned into one of these. It's turned into quite possibly my favorite feature. Uh, Backtracks is not my favorite feature to film because it is a hell of a lot of work, hard work. 
uh, but Bargain Bag is so fun, uh, so much fun, so easy to film. All I have to do is basically talk about, uh, you know, uh, uh, prepare the notes for the CD I'm going to talk about, and that's it. Everything else is just totally ad-libbed, pretty much. So, so uh, yeah, Bargain Bag is one of my absolute favorite things to do every month. I, I love doing it. Uh, and, uh, yeah, and fortunately, with, uh, even though Skips closed a, couple, a month or so ago, I had the foresight to uh, load up on bargain bags, uh, a mystery CD grab bag, so I've got enough to, I think, carry my bargain bag, bag feature through to the end of 2021. So, uh, yeah, I'm probably crazy for buying that many, but uh, I, I, that's how much I love the bargain bag feature. So, yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to keep it alive, even though uh, Skips is, is no longer around. The bargain bag feature, as I'd like to say, lives on. Now let's talk about uh, Now and Then for a moment, that little twist that you do on the album review feature. Uh, that's another interesting idea that you came up with, but uh, I have to ask, and probably a lot of people that are wondering out there, why aren't album reviews a bigger part of your channel? Well, uh, you know, there's so many other YouTubers out there that do album reviews. I mean, that's like 90% of what they do. They crank out a lot of album reviews. They review just about every new album that comes along. Uh, so that's a, uh, an area that's pretty well covered on YouTube already without me being one of the hundreds if not thousands that uh, you know just add to it. And also, quite frankly, I think a lot of other people out there do it better than I do, uh, honestly. And it's, it's a lot of work. It's, uh, you know, I, I don't know honestly how some of these YouTubers do it uh, so with such regularity and such consistency and uh, timeliness and stuff. It, it's just I have to hand it to them. It takes a lot of thinking, you know, I, I, I've got a day job, so I can only devote so much uh, time and mental energy to what I do. So, and, and I, I have a lot more fun with the unique features on my channel that I do anyway, you know, backtracks, bargain bag, all those other things. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I realize that probably a lot of my viewers out there would like to see me do more album reviews. So uh, I decided to, you know, that's how I kind of came about with, uh, I, I tried to brainstorm unique ways to do album reviews and that's how now and then came along was I you know hey I could do a review of an artist's latest album and one from their past catalog so that's where that came about uh, it helped me put a nice unique uh, spin on it and also uh, until just very recently I hadn't been a streamer so I wasn't streaming music I basically would buy albums only the ones that I was interested in so you know that was you know for one reason I just couldn't review you know, for that reason, I couldn't review every album that came along. And I also don't like to be negative on my channel. Uh, I've said this before, and so uh, I, I like to, rather than just, you know, okay, this album's good, this album's bad, this album's good, this album's bad, not do that, but hey, this album is one that I like, and maybe you like it. You know, just kind of steer people's attention toward certain albums, the ones that I really like. So that's one of, one of the other reasons why I don't do a lot of reviews. Uh, and also recently, uh, recently I have begun streaming, but this year has just been crazy. I've had a lot of trouble keeping up with new album releases in general, uh, not just uh, when they come out, but also getting my hands on them. Uh, there's every, everything from uh, Mother Nature, you know, we had a snowstorm and had cleanup from that, and a couple of health emergencies in the family, as well as uh, home remodeling projects, uh, which... Uh, took up a lot of uh, money and a lot of time that, you know, I would otherwise use with, you know, buying and listening to music. So that's been a big distraction from this year. So hopefully next year I will get better at uh, um, picking up on uh, the incoming albums, listening to them, giving my thoughts on them. Uh, one thing I hope to maybe do uh, going forward from now on is, uh, if not doing reviews more frequently, at least doing like a quarterly uh, mass album review sort of thing. Uh, I've, I've got an idea in mind to do that, uh, and that should get easier, as I said, now that I am doing streaming, so I can you know, listen to whatever I feel like I want to listen to, and I don't have to pay money for it, other than the monthly streaming fee, obviously. So I don't have to feel restricted in what I listen to. Now, speaking of the new year, uh, in addition to possibly more album reviews, uh, are there any other things that we might uh, be able to look forward to on your channel for the coming year? Well, um, hopefully more discographies. Uh, yeah, as, as I've told my audience before, uh, I promised them at the beginning of this year that I was going to do more discographies. I did, I've done one so far. That was just after I'd started my channel back in 2018. And, uh, you know, at the end of that year, I, it was going to be a semi-regular feature. I always intended it to be a semi-regular feature, but I did that one. I haven't done another one since then, despite promising at the beginning of this year that I was going to do at least two 
it's the middle of October and I still haven't done any, so that is a New Year's resolution that I probably will have ended up breaking by the end of this year, so I, I promise, as well as I can promise, I'm going to try and do at least two discographies next year. Hopefully I'll do one this year, before the year is out, so... Uh, but yeah, discographies, I want to I want to get more into that. There are a handful of artists that... Uh, obscure artists that I really enjoy, whose, uh, all of whose albums I have, that I would like to, uh, you know, talk about, uh, bring a bit of a higher profile to, so... Yeah, that's uh, one reason, one thing I want to do, and uh, I'm toying with the idea of possibly doing a Great 28 kind of thing, that uh, kind of like what uh, Kyle does on Track by Track, although I have the distinct feeling that uh, I should have started on it uh, long before now, because uh, I, you know, it's, it's probably just too soon to get it all done, because that's one video every day, so uh, that's probably not going to get done, so I'm not even going to promise you that, because it may not happen at all. And, and I also, I've also got... Uh, one thing I've wanted to do at least one of every year is a theme week. Uh, last year it was Weird Al, Weird Al week. Uh, this year I, I've got a theme in mind. I'm going to do it before the end of the year, I promise you. Uh, that is a promise. Uh, and I, I was going to do it, uh, it was going to be out a couple months ago, I was going to try and do it, but I just have not gotten the, blocked out the time to do it. Uh, one of them is going to actually involve collaborations with two of uh, the YouTubers that I mentioned a little bit ago, uh, two friends of mine. They've already sent me their uh, their contributions to it, so that video is like 80% done anyway, so, but yeah, I've, I've still got, you know, the other four videos to do on that, I've got them roughly sketched out, I still need to actually do them, so, so yeah, one theme week every year is something I'd like to do, and there's another thing that I uh, saw on another YouTube channel that I'm really planning on doing, I'm definitely planning on doing this just because I've, I think I've worked out how I'm going to do it, and that's, it's a thing called the 50 Album Challenge, and it's where uh, you listen to 50 albums that are not in your regular rotation, ones that you listen to very rarely, if you've ever listened to them at all. Uh, and it's geared toward vinyl, you know, listening to the albums on vinyl that are in your vinyl collection, not just picking an album, streaming at random. So, and I've got a lot of albums that fit that criteria, that have albums that I've never listened to, or have not listened to in a long time. So I'm planning on doing that. Uh, I don't know if you'll see that before the year is out, but uh, yeah, hopefully you'll see that at some point. Uh, but, you know, the thing is, I don't like to plan things out too rigidly on my channel. If, you know, if you do that, if you plan something out, it's it's not going to, it's going to feel forced, it's not going to feel natural, and that's, you know, that's what I want, what I want my channel to feel like. It's, in a way, I feel like my channel is kind of my baby, you know, so it's, it's going to develop how it develops, and it's not going to be 100% what you planned it to be, so, you know, that's why I, I like to keep things, you know, I like to plan certain things. But overall, the channel is just going to take on its own flow. It's going to, you know, evolve how it's going to evolve. And, uh, you know, I think, I think I'll think i be happy with it just because I let it happen that way. Even if there are things about it that, uh, you know, I'm not totally happy with. It's just going to feel more right, more natural, more organic. Now, I would like to talk to you for a minute about your listening habits. Uh, now, you've been buying more vinyl, I see here. Uh, and you talked a minute ago about uh, that you're streaming now. So um, what's the deal with CDs? Are they kind of on their way out for you? What's up? You know, CDs are becoming a little less attractive to me, and the main reason for that is they're becoming harder to find. I mean, uh, the uh, Cheryl Crow's new CD threads came out at uh, local store House of Records. On the day that it was released, they got one copy on CD. I couldn't get it because I didn't have the money, and it took them six weeks before they got it in again. So I ended up having to get it uh, online. I had to buy it online through Barnes & Noble. And I've had to buy a couple of uh, new release CDs lately online because the, the stores weren't getting them. And this is a distribution thing that's been happening to all stores everywhere. It's not just my local stores. It's happening with your local stores and pretty much everywhere. The stores are doing the best they can. It's, it's not the store proprietor's fault, so don't blame them. And another thing that's kind of uh, putting a wrench in that is uh, I've noticed that Amazon.com is, uh, you know, in order to keep up with demand for physical product, I mean, hey, you know, physical media is still in demand. It's not going away despite what some of you people think. Uh, Amazon is selling some uh, artists' new releases as uh, manufacture on demand. So they burn them onto CDRs and, you know, uh, screen print the labels on them, print up the jackets and stuff and jewel cases and, and send them out as they're ordered. And I've caught myself almost ordering one of those, and I don't want to. I mean, I don't have worries about the quality of those. It's just when I want a new release CD by an artist, I want the genuine CD. I don't want something that's manufactured on demand on a CDR. It's just, you know, it's just a little pet peeve of mine. 
you know. And there's another reason that uh, I've kind of been clinging on to the CD format that I'm not going to go into here. I'll get into uh, in another video coming up soon here. But that's one thing that's kind of, uh, if that goes away as I'm kind of expecting it to, uh, that will be just one less reason for me to keep buying CDs. And also it's just, you know, as I mentioned, I'm streaming now, so I'm able to listen to albums before I buy them. But also I've noticed uh, with skips going out of business sale and uh, in, you know, just in general, it's fun buying vinyl. It's fun buying it. It's fun opening it. It's fun listening to it. Just more so than CDs. It's just, you know, you're buying more for your money. You're buying a 12 by 12 inch, you know, heavy round platter of music uh, rather than a little flim flimsy plastic disc. Uh, you know, and, and I mean, sometimes you're paying more for the, the vinyl record, but uh, it's just, for me, it just feels more fulfilling. I guess you'd say, uh, buying a vinyl record than, than buying a CD. So I would not be surprised. I could be completely wrong about all this, but I would not be surprised at all if my, uh, in starting in the new year, my CD consumption, my CD buying goes down uh, by quite a good measure. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Tom, for all your time. And uh, it's been a whole lot of fun talking to you and getting to know you and helping your viewers get to know you a little bit better uh, through this interview. Uh, before we go, is there anything you'd like to tell your viewers out there? Well, really just a thank you, a huge thank you for subscribing and watching over the previous uh, months and years and uh, for sticking with me over the months and years to come, hopefully. Hopefully there will be many years to come and uh, I've got 60 some subscribers right now, so uh, I, I never thought I'd get that far. So it's nice, nice to know that somebody out there likes what I'm doing uh, and maybe that subscriber count will uh, keep climbing on up. Uh, and yeah, thank you all for the uh, comments and the questions and the likes and uh, constructive criticisms and all that stuff. It's been so much fun and uh, thank you for your, for your support and it's, as I said it's been a whole lot of fun bringing this content to you over the uh, months and years and hopefully the months and years to come. So but anyway yes and oh and if you have uh, any questions you'd like to the answers to uh, send them to me in the uh, comment section below or in, or in direct messages on Twitter uh, and maybe uh, maybe me and I can set up an interview uh, in the future to answer viewer submitted questions so that'd be a hoot wouldn't it? Anyway, uh, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Feedback, questions, thoughts, or suggestions, lay them on me in the comments section below. Also, check out the description below for the link to my Twitter feed and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.